Hi there, my name is Solis, or Solace, or So, and this is a tour of my EverQuest Guild's housing zone, as well as commentary on EverQuest's housing system. First, some quick history about me. I play Solis Dark Umbra on the Firiona V server, where I've been since 2001. Yes, the T in my name is silent for some reason. Some people knew me as General So. Yes, the same Solace who saved the Garanga Sphere. Way back then I joined a guild called the Wayfarers Elite, a group of friends who enjoyed playing in the Lost Dungeons. In 2005, the majority of the leaders left the guild for EQ2 and passed ownership to me. I led the guild for many years, we collaborated on in-game storylines, did lots of role-playing, plenty of questing and raiding, mostly in Lachlan content, Lost Dungeons, Omens of War, Gates of Discord. Eventually I sort of retired in 2012. I had a lot of fun, made a lot of friends, people you truly get to know personally. I also made a few enemies, but you can't get along with everyone. And after so long, EverQuest gets a little stale, people move on to other games, they have lives to live. I don't play as often as I once did, mostly soloing and doing free-to-play stuff, but one feature I truly enjoyed was the addition of housing. Ever since uh, seeing housing in Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies, I wanted to see it in EverQuest. And after a survey of the most wanted in-game features, the developers finally chose player-made housing. The following ramblings are my opinions. They may not be entirely correct, but as someone who has extensively used the housing feature, I feel I'm an expert on the subject. Well, here we go. Welcome to Spruce Bridge Hollows, the village of the Wayfarer's Elite. Yes, the same neighborhood featured in the EverQuest Player Spotlight in November of 2014. My good friend Pict used to hold these main plots, but there's new owners now. If you're into housing, you may have seen these castle walls and airship before, as they are very popular player studio items, which are made by EverQuest players and sold in game for real money. My very good gaming friend Paul Samples made these models. Here's his housing zone and some of the items he made. He does a really good job with the texturing, makes very functional large items that housing players love, and is among the most popular studio designers. It's certainly something Daybreak should have offered over the years. They really only added items copied from a few expansions, which is kind of lazy, and they left it to the players to fill in the housing system with amazing items, and then they took a good percentage of the profits. That last building was never even put into the game due to the player studio being shut down when Sony sold EverQuest to Daybreak. We've got a few claimed but unremarkable plots here, and there we've got a plot with the recent housing items that Daybreak actually made over the past couple years, the Ixar Monument and the Sand Garden, eh, not too impressive. You only get them if you paid almost twice as much as the regular price for the expansion to get the Collector's Edition. Sadly, this is the only stuff that gets officially released for the housing system anymore. Past this plot is a neat pirate ship released a couple years earlier. I'd say that's more worth the price, as it's an actual house and it has a decent interior that fits the theme. Recently this area had some creative people move in and they added some pretty cool designs. Our first stop beyond the entrance is the Spruce Bridge Hollow itself. There are spruces, there are bridges, and hollows I guess. I've got many alts who own three plots each, and they all share ownership with Soles. My goal when buying all these plots was to make a specific roleplay theme for each area and push the boundaries of the housing system. As you can see from a distance, the trees all kind of blend together. I was able to expand the tree leaves beyond the plot boundaries and overlap into nearby areas, which gives the forest a unique look I haven't seen in other housing zones. So this area is officially known as Elite Woods. And that's where we got our main guild hall and where most of the guild members live. And over here we've got a nice little hidden park made by my wife Salia. She made a nice little hidden place to relax. Over to the right there, it looks like uh, where the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland would live. We really enjoyed this little plot and we'd hang out here after doing missions sometimes. Here we got a nice little koi pond and some cute bunnies of course. Mm -hmm. 
Some of these tree leaves can be passed through and other ones you can't. It's not very consistent. So over here we got a giant tree with another little park to relax in. And beyond that is a outdoor bar my friend Fred made. There's a little dwarf that works here. And beyond that is a foggy dark corner of the forest where the elite guild hall is located. I wanted to make this area a little intimidating for people exploring around, kind of like a giant maze. I put a lot of wildlife in, wandering around, to make it feel more alive. So eventually you can make your way through the hedges and ruins and come to a giant tree, which you may recognize if you've played Zelda games. And atop the giant Deku tree is the Elite Hall. To get to the top the hard way, you have to find the secret route starting at the other big tree. This is the first of many hidden pathways throughout the area. Kinda hard to navigate. Great view from up here though. I think I tried to make it so you could just hop between the plots without levitation, but for now I'm just going to float between them to make it easier. There's a little porch up here for another nice view. And uh, here we are, the glorious guild hall. I bought the basic guild hall, the one you didn't have to pay real cash for. And the lame thing is that it's just a copy of the regular guild hall that came out years before, except you can add your own items and models. So to make this new wing of the old hall, I completely covered the area with my own hallways. In the main entryway, we've got all the basic functions you'll need quick access to. Player and guild banks, the post office, teleport merchant, tribute master. That was my old drinking buddy, Zarnok. Over here is a little stables area for mounts. I had a few other animals here, but I've moved them to a sort of museum plot. You'll see more of that later. Over here is a little zoo for pets. Most of them have been moved to the museum area. A little kobold used to live here. And a dragon lived there, I think. And a bazoo. And over here was a singing frog. Over there was a Gurplan. I really tried to make this a neat forest cave with tiny little environments. Here's an icy area for the ice rat and polar bear. 
And over there is a birdhouse for the Aviax. And over here was a red dragon pet. And down there some more ratties. So this loves his pet rats. And some shrooms. We've got some nice paintings here in the entryway. There's some extra weapons at the bank. We got this wizard frog here, the teleportation pad. That's in honor of my friend Kyu. And over here we've got a little kitty bard. It's in memory of a player named Vive who passed away. This was her alt. That's a, always sad in the world of EverQuest, but it's a reality many of us know. There are two more floors here. Of course, we got the Vashir symbol to represent Solace and his leadership of the guild. And it's part of the lore of the Spruce Bridge Hollows. The second floor has four extra rooms for members and a little library. Here we've got the little teddy bears, which was a charity item for Haiti when they had that uh, earthquake. You usually don't buy items from the with real money from the studio, but for charity I'll certainly help out. Handed out a lot of those to people, and they use them in their plots. Up on the third floor we have all the trade skill tables, guild trophies, and a relaxing hot tub near a fireplace. Those lion shields there and the stained glass are part of the original guild hall. This kind of worked them into my design. Over there we got a nice bar. And some Christmas lights left up from when I would dress the place up for the holidays. Here's some of my friends hanging out back in the day. Here is our ice cream freezer. Those ice cream models there are from another rare clicky that I have. There's a slice of 10th anniversary cake from a GM event I attended. Now a request is at its 20th anniversary, but I probably missed that event. Wonder if they had any cake. These merchants pay homage to old guild members. On the right is our old dragon cleric, Shanir. In the middle is an homage to Vive, the dark elf necromancer. And right here is a memorial to Claney, who was a high elf cleric and was my really good friend for many years. She also passed away. It was very devastating for the guild at the time, but they will always be remembered. We saw a Kazakh fool there enjoying some brews. I'm sure we'll see him later. Here's the main guest room for special visitors. Here's my cool Shaman Guild Leader room. Back there is a little chapel, and you can see the stars above, which was an opening in the main Guild Hall layout. Kind of built that around that. And so I used to pray here for guildmates in need. Kinda corny, I know.
Well, that's it for the primary guild hall. From way up here, we can get a nice view of the elite woods. I love how it all blends together and you can't really tell where the plots begin or end. Here you can see all the ancient ruins and the houses on top of them and the crane behind them. We'll visit that area later. This here is Nariko's plot. She made a little spa area. She's a pretty creative designer. Next door is another plot of hers. She made a puppet show band, as well as a giant tree. And next to that is Nyan's made house. There's Nyan and Nariko, excellent designers. And next door is Cutie Pie's house. Up there you can see the hot air balloon I made. And below that is another cool housing item that Paul Samples made, the Gnomish airship, somewhat inspired by the balloon. I haven't seen Cutie Pie in a long time, so I keep paying his rent to keep the plot as a memorial of sorts. There he is flying in his Gnomish airship joke once I loaded up his plot with a bunch of squatting dwarves and he later armed them and made them his guards. There they are, working for him now. And here is what was once Fred's main plot. About a year ago, due to Daybreak's ineptitude, an update rolled back the housing zones a few weeks. So any rent you paid, any items you deposited, any changes you added were erased. They did pretty much nothing to remedy this problem. I lost a few plots I hadn't loaded with tons of rent, including Fred's house. I petitioned many times, but the tech support who responded kept telling me they couldn't do anything because I wasn't the true owner. I couldn't get any of it back. This update, which wasn't even housing related, screwed lots of people out of their plots, and I know people who quit the game after losing stored items. It's a really bad thing to happen to the pretty much dead housing community, and it makes the whole system really unreliable. I recall a few years ago when all the paid guild neighborhoods poofed. Why work hours, days, and even weeks on a massive housing build only to lose it all? It's so one of the main reasons I recorded this was to preserve the memory of our housing zone before another flawed update wipes it all out. Anyway, I placed the old rocket design here from another plot and left it to memorialize Fred, who was a fine ranger and a great friend. This is a nice beach resort made by Nyan. She's a very talented housing designer, and we worked together many times to create cool plots. Nyan, Nariko, and Paul have all built lots of things to my Minecraft server as well. Here you got the lovely tower, a fine symbol of our collaborations. Nyan figured out how to stack these gazebo things to make an orb shape, and I expanded on the idea to construct the tower. She had all the decorations and details. It's always nice to get a female perspective when making plots, as women have great ideas that most men don't even consider.
up here provides a lovely view of the forest and the ruins. Here you can see the crane a little bit better, which according to my lore was built by the local dwarves for their restoration efforts. Here's some pictures of the crane building process. It certainly was an interesting challenge. And here's a nice panoramic view of the Elite Woods. Of course, we got Soles here with his lute and his herb pipe. He's quite the stoner shaman. And let's dive down to the next plot, another one Nyan and I worked on, a little carnival area staffed by the dwarves. Here's one of Paul's lovely castle towers. Here's a snack stand where you can get all your favorite fair food. And next is a game where you try to knock over bottles. You can see all the cool prizes available. Here's an archery game. And next to that is the little water tank thing where you throw the ball and try to knock people in. And a cool little ferris wheel that Nyan made. And here's the fun house, but I call it the fear house. And there's the other game where you swing the hammer and see how high you can get the marker. So this is the first fear house prototype. I sort of experimented with an idea of a scary maze, a little story. And we'll go ahead and check that out in part two.